the bubble uh, drugs in because he wasn't like that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to this production of the Red Throat Glee performing Sherlock Holmes and the Adventure of the Missing Heiress. I would like to ask you all right now, please, to turn your cell phones to silent. Turn your calendars back to 1947. And turn your imaginations to when it is always 1895. Shreds and patches of ballad songs and snatches. 
For heaven's sake, Watson, stop that caterwauling and throw on a bathrobe. We're about to have a caller, and I'm sure it means another case. Why should I interrupt my back? You are quite capable of handling the first stages of any case all by yourself, Holmes. Not when it concerns a lady in hysterics and a court train. You are much better than I at managing female agitation. Holmes, what are you raving about? An elegant carriage has just galloped up to our curbstone, and without way for the footman to alight from the box and assist her, a middle-aged creature in full court regalia, complete to the feathers in her hair, bursts out into the street and is even now pulling our front doorbell out by the roots. Aha! Mrs. Hudson has let her in. She's coming up the stairs. Now, will you throw on a bathrobe and come out and protect me? Certainly not. Very well, then. I shall be obliged to usher her in here. No! Great Scott! Great! Well, I'm coming! I'm coming! I'm coming! Good, good, good Lord! Look at, look at me! Dripping all over the carpet! A fine way to greet a lady. Don't worry. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, she's too upset to notice. Here, tie the cord around your middle, and you're trying to put your slippers on the wrong feet. But confound it, I heard. Come in. Mr. Holmes! Hello, Mr. Holmes! Thank heavens I find you at home. Why, why, Lady Mamie? Oh, oh, Dr. Watson, I'm delighted to see you. Could you give me a glass of sherry? Or a sedative? Or, or something? Oh, this is terrible. I'm, I'm ruined. And the poor girl. Oh, Mr. Holmes, you must find her. You must. Of course, Lady Maynard. But first, uh, perhaps, you'd better tell us the name of this damsel in distress and inform us just what difficulty she seems to be in. Well, that's just it. I haven't the remotest idea. Oh, oh I don't mean I don't know her name. It's Elizabeth. Elizabeth Bascom. Well, not, not, not Miss Lizzie Bascom. But the only child of old Hellfire Bascom. In Copper King? That's right, Dr. Watson. Quite the bell of the season, I gather. Yes, Elizabeth has certainly been popular. Not that it's made the slightest impression on her. Mm, but yeah, perhaps that explains her popularity. <laughs> that and her father's millions. But why are you so concerned about Miss Elizabeth Bascom, Lady Maynooth? It has been my responsibility to sponsor the young lady through her first London season to see that she makes the proper social connections. And well, her father is bound and determined that she shall marry into the nobility. I had no idea that George Bascom, more often referred to as Hellfire, was one of your acquaintances, Lady Maynooth. To be quite frank, I. I do feel I had best be frank with you, Mr. Holmes. I have never set eyes on Elizabeth's father, but well, a, a mutual friend, knowing that he was anxious to have her received in the best circles, and also knowing that my own financial position has not been too secure, but I was, shall we say, persuaded to take Elizabeth under my wing. I, I hope you made a profitable arrangement. I did, Mr. Holmes, but I earned it every penny. Do you mean to say that the lady is uncouth in spite of her great beauty? No, Dr. Watson, the truth forces me to admit that Elizabeth is really quite presentable and even lovable when not crossed. But when she is crossed, she takes after her father? Exactly. She insists on going for solitary walks, completely unchaperoned. She will strike up an acquaintance with the most unlikely people. Democratic, uh, Holmes? It might be considered democratic in an ordinary female, but where a young woman of Miss Bascom's wealth is concerned, it's rather dangerous. How true, then. We've been receiving, well, not exactly threats, but certainly cranked letters ever since it became known that Elizabeth had come to stay with me. But Elizabeth absolutely refuses to pay heed to her own danger. She says she's been handling situations of that sort all her life, and she refuses to become perturbed about it at this late date. And now it's happened. What has? Well, that is, I finally persuaded her to take an interest in young Lord Weaverbrook, a very suitable match in every way. In fact, her father is arriving on the next boat in order to announce the engagement. Well, surely that's nothing to be concerned about. Yes, but what is he going to do when he finds out his daughter has been abducted? Abducted? What? Abductors? This note was pinned to the carriage seat when I returned and found Elizabeth gone. 
I gather from your costume, Lady Maidens, that you were on your way to Buckingham Palace. Yes, Mr. Holmes. After considerable maneuvering, I had arranged to have Miss Bassett received in court. It took a bit of doing, and I admit I expected trouble from Elizabeth. However, she fell in with a plan of quite a show of alacrity, even standing patiently for endless fittings of a train and taking lessons on how to make a court bow. I've always wondered how one managed that. Don't interrupt, Watson. Go on, Lady Maidens. Today, I take it, was the day. Yes, and more perfect weather one couldn't have wished for. And I must say, Elizabeth seemed to be in high spirits. We were well prepared with the usual hamper of wine and sandwiches and cake. You know that interminable wait in St. James's Court. Oh, I, I, you know, I've always thought that the sight of the ladies in their full regalia on the way to a court or function is one of the greatest sights of London. Elizabeth seemed to share your opinion, Dr. Watson. At any rate, she seemed in unusually high spirits. The other carriages crowded around us.
But just to satisfy your curiosity, I'll read them to you. How very kind. We have kidnapped Lizzie. If you know what's good for her, don't tell the cops. Sign, the Black Hand. Aha! A band of American cutthroats. The words kidnapped, cops, are dead to kill away. I've heard of these Black Hand gangs. Oh dear! We can only hope that her father will arrive in time to pay for any ransom demands. Oh, Mr. Holmes! Hmm, yes, we may be dealing with a band of cutthroats and desperados, but let's not jump to any conclusions, Watson, until we have examined the scene of the crime. You mean you expect to find clues and all that turmoil in the courtyard of Buckingham Palace? No, Watson. The scene of the crime is much closer than that. It is, in fact, drawn up to our curb. I allude, of course, to Lady Maynooth's carriage. Uh, I see what you mean. I hadn't thought of that. Well, what are we waiting for? For you to go and put on some trousers, Watson. <laughs> Stiff, showing very few of the pages have been read. 
But notice how readily the book opens at the portion describing the British Museum. And here, paragraphs describing the famous Elgin Marbles. That page is decidedly dog -eared. The Elgin Marbles? Good heavens, I had no idea this was a connoisseur of art. I fancy Elizabeth was a connoisseur of many things of which you had no idea, Lady Maynooth. Oh dear, what do we do now? I suppose we'd better consult Scotland Yard. I rather fancy that a certain Mr. Percy Smithers will prove more helpful in this matter. I suggest that Watson and I pay him a visit. Percy Smithers? Who in thunder is he? The famous archaeologist and authority on Greek and Roman relics. <coughs> He is also, also curator of the Elgin Marbles. Here we are, Watson, the British Museum. Imposing, if somewhat moth eaten old mausoleum. Hey, what? Oh, you important pointed out to me as if I'd never laid eyes on it before. I had, I had an uncle whose idea of entertaining these various visiting animals was to trail them throughout the British Museum. Open the door, Watson. No, I, I can't. It's stuck. Oh, never mind. Here comes an attendant. Say, God, the entrance seems to be a bit bulky. We can't get it open, don't you? And why would you? It's locked up for the night. Closing time was 20 minutes ago. Well, I guess we won't get to see the marbles today, huh, Holmes? I'm not particularly interested in the marbles, Watson. Gar, can you tell me if Mr. Smithers, curator Percy Smithers, is still on the premises? Oh, no, sir. He's gone home. You saw him leave? He always leaves five minutes before closing time. I don't suppose you can give us his home address. I can do better than that, sir. There he'd be over there. First house across the quadrant. The one with the bay window? That's right. Thank you. Come along, Watson. Do you know this fellow Smithers Holmes? Only slightly, Watson. I've met him at the Diogenes Club from time to time when I've gone there to see my brother Mycroft. Like all the rest of the members, he's what you might call taciturn. A uh, grumpy old professor type, I take it. Professorial and grumpy, I grant you, but he is certainly not old. In fact, Mr. Percy Smithers looks not unlike the Greek statues he's such an authority on, only with more clothing, of course. <laughs> yeah, I remember that there was many elderly ladies who got up a petition demanding that drapers be put on the marbles when they first went on exhibit. Ridiculous. They're fine just as they are. Then you've seen the Elgin marbles? Oh, many times. Re you recall the statue of Perseus? Perfectly. Could you describe his attitude? Well, I can do better than that. I can duplicate it. He's standing somewhat like this. Not bad. Except the positions of the left and right arms should be reversed. Is your friend to the fit, sir? Certainly not. I was just, I was just explaining. Stop following us. I wasn't following you, sir. Just going home to supper. Fuck Well, here we are at Mr. Spiller's store. Ring the bell, Watson. That's a good fellow. Always giving orders. I still don't understand what information you expect to gather from a curator of the British Museum about a missing Canadian heiress. You never know, Watson. You never know. Aye, and what might you be wanting? We've come to see Mr. Smithers, Mr. Percy Smithers. Well, you can't see him. I'm sorry to disturb him if he's having a supper, but this matter is rather urgent. You can't see him because he's not come home. As for his supper, it's been burned to a crisp waiting for him. And a fine trout it was, too, that he ordered special. What a pity. Perhaps you could tell me if a young lady in a blue and pink squatting suit has called on Mr. Smithers lately? Certainly not. Mr. Smithers is a respectable man, and one of the shyest I ever did see besides. Once again, we draw a blank. This case seems to lead nowhere but down blind alleys. On the contrary, Watson, the fact that Mr. Smithers did not come home for his supper is decidedly revealing. You don't think he's been forcibly kidnapped, too? By the same outfit that abducted Miss Baxcombe? No, I don't think there's any indications of, uh, kidnapping. At least, I doubt that any force was used. 
currently intact. Yes, they're opening the doors now. If you will follow me. Into the British Museum? Calm yourself, Mr. Bassman. A little culture is quite harmless, I assure you.
right to Clipper Craft, 205th Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes and the Adventure of the Red-Headed League, broadcast right here on KRTF. If you wish to attend this Sherlock Holmes broadcast, see your local Clipper Craft dealer or any member of the Norwegian Explorers of Minnesota, and they will tell you how to obtain tickets. Broadcasting system. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I have a favor to ask. We have more people who are looking to come in for the next show. So if you could please, and, and the actors only have a very short turnaround before the next show. So if you could please clear the space. If you're expecting to meet someone here, way to get their attention and tell them you need them out there. Um, thank you so much. And if you do not wish to keep your program, if you leave it on the table by the door, I was not expecting this wonderful turnout. And so we didn't have quite enough. Thank you all very much.